All right, let's take some time and actually get inside the tool. Um, again, if you signed up ahead of time, you have a Canvas uh, course that you have your teacher access in, so you can go ahead and create a page in there and embed all kinds of stuff. Feel free to run around in there. It's called the Active Teaching Lab. If you came later on and you signed in, we, you also should have an invitation now. Um, thanks, Julie. Um, to go in and start playing in that course. And I'll open up the course up here and see what people are doing. And then if you have to talk amongst yourselves with your challenges and your questions, and we'll give you, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So once you and you can have a link where you can embed it on the bottom here. And once you do that, it's in. It does say guide webs, yeah. Yeah, they, they when they typed it in, they typed it in too fast. I think they hit GG instead of all. I got the dog left. Right. Spam or something terrible, man. You got these different things across here. So if you want to embed a box out, it's right here. If you want to tell Toria, video is right here. And then this little upside down carrot thing, this carrot thing here. As yeah. 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 There's the YouTube. There's, there's your video. There's your office mix. Somebody mentioned office mix before. And then Google Apps, which 
Well, like, so there's none of this tragic happening. Well, there's no better answer. Oh, it's probably the thing. So, so what happened if you put the box in the box? Yes. Oh, right. The code. Yeah. It should. Yes. Um, so it does do that. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, and as far as like an easy way to embed images, So in I do this with Google and it's yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean that's what we're doing. Yeah. Is anyone from me? And the default is always anyone from the faculty of Madison Web which is a horrible default. I agree. Because the students don't come in with their UW Madison so they come in into their Gmail. They come into their Gmail, right? Like, yeah. And that's Fox right now. No, I'm back in Google Apps. You're back in Google Apps, but there is anyone can do this. Because, like, some content I can hide completely, like if it's animal research. Sure. Nobody else can see but that group. But then, Say food safety, we have to show vendors that are vendors who you don't have access. You should be able to set that at a page by page level so or at a level. So for Google, that would be the best solution. Like Google, this is my question. Like in all the embedded tools that we have access to, what makes the most sense for what content, depending on how it's being used, who is viewing it? Because we have like we have some clinic folks, we have foundation folks who don't have that ID. Right. Like and then we have that ID folks, and then we have outside vendors and. The con and some of the content needs different yeah, levels so of security. So, so one of the ways that so I think that about might this be the is best tool. security through obscurity. Yeah, media, exactly. media if, 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 if you are not in a UW Medicine camera, course, you're not going to see that link. Now somebody could take that link and share that link with you. Just as somebody could take a screenshot of that pelvis or whatever and share it with whoever they want, or they could take a picture of the camera and do that. There are, it's not perfect security, but simply by needing a password to get into the canvas, of course, most people aren't going to find pictures. that link might get turned on randomly. I think open it up. And like if you, like with, from YouTube settings, yeah. are we able to go like share public wow. view? Yeah. Yeah. That might be a way for the general public yes. versus, I mean, I'm like doing different, like yes. alternative yes. settings for and posting to the website so instead of like, within, yeah. within yeah. 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 Yep. And so the, the image. Did you have the um, The nice thing about um, um, is I can just do a screenshot here and paste it, and it's immediately there. Yeah. Yeah. It shows up. We ran into that with five twenty earlier. Fairly immediately. The next time I'm there, there that screenshot showed up. And so it's, it's a very quick way to know, like, go to the file, find it on your hard drive, and upload it, and now it's in the right spot. And is it, you know, image capture 700, and the file should never be able to understand. So that's one of the reasons that I love it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, this is what Alright, this is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> check this out. Um, I have this one, I have modified it, the iPhone itself. 
so that it can look the same and turn it as preview. So whatever the document name and yeah. the, the last name. slash of that is, right. instead of plug, you can put it in or whatever. Yeah, it's slash preview. And that gives us this nice thing that does not have all of the, the top stuff yeah. above, above. Mm -hmm. However, so it's really, it's really yeah, you look at the actually I think we can do that. Um, it's been a few, a few months, fairly long. If I look at it, you know, um, <coughs> that it through that little carrot thing, that is that look here. So here's the preview one that I embedded as an iPhone. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, the only thing is is a live editable. The one that I embedded with the Google no. carrot thing. And this is set up so that they can access whatever privacy yeah. settings we have right now. Julie, hello, I am live and editable. <laughs> Hi. Oh, <yes. laughs> so this is cool because if I wanted to have a sign-up sheet, when I only wanted, you know, everybody here, I gave sharing permissions, nobody else could edit that. Or if I only wanted, you know, group one to edit that, they could go in and they could edit that. If I wanted people to say, hey, here's my syllabus, do you have any questions? I can set it up not so they have full editing privileges, but so they have commenting or suggesting privileges. And that way, they can't change anything on there, but they can add like comments like, hey, I'm, I'm really confused about Sandbox. And it shows up there, and everybody else sees it. So like people can say, yeah, me too, I don't get this too. And then I'm like, OK, I better change that. This is kind of a neat level of interaction that we didn't have in D2L very easily. So you yeah. can do this by group? Like if I have 15 separate worksheets for 15 groups in my class, can each the permissions come into Canvas as a document? Yes. You know what I mean? So only group one can edit groups one, group one's document? Um, not automatically. Okay, of course. But, but, but <laughs> yes. Um, yes, absolutely. You can have, yeah. So to solve that problem, you change your permissions on the Google Doc end or inside the Canvas end with the groups function. Right, right here in the sharing. Okay. Side. So, well, there's the new collaboration link on the nav bar as well, but I think it gives you the power to set up Google Docs for that type of collaboration. Yeah, now here's the thing about this collaboration thing. <laughs> It'll give you a blank sheet of Google Doc paper okay. that students can use. Um, the new Google interaction. Uh, if I wanted to use this, well, this embedded thing, my canvas is broken right now. But I can create this, and anybody who saves this to themselves. Maybe it's a link. No, if I put a link to it, they would download it into their own camp Google account. So mm -hmm. then it was only theirs. I think theirs and yours, because you're the owner of it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted them to have worksheets, you could put the prompts on the worksheets, put the link to it, they get it, they get this fill out of old worksheet thing which lets them add what they want. Multiple and then make multiple copies for everybody who clicks on it. So everybody who will get their own copy. So going back to that editable thing we had out there, which is really nice up there. Can they make it full screen so you can say other people that say you can play the other? It gets bigger the bigger my screen is. So this is lovely. This is a trick that I even do with that. You know how it gives you that inch? Um, margins automatically, I always go in and I make it 0.25 on the edges just to give us, because otherwise it'd be like big big white space, frame, more big white space, and then you got this tiny little stuff that you can see. There's no full screen button. Here's how much to be a full screen. to the worksheet, right? I have no idea that now. What is it? Oh yeah, I mean, the sure, that'll do it. Okay. Give it here. So, nope, that's not the bit of the worksheet. This is the bit of the worksheet, the journal. No, we don't have one to do the bit of the worksheet anyway. Because you could, like, do it that way. 
Yeah. All right. So this is it's tricky. It's it's not really tricky, but it's HTML. <laughs> um, so you get the rich text edit view right now, and click on the HTML, and it's just a it's just a basic iframe. Embedded as iframe. So, all very scary, right? But, yeah, this is this is basically it. And you see how it says slash preview? So, it's just all I, I didn't have to type any of this in. No. I just went to here, and I went to, to the activity sheet itself, and I went to publish to the web, and I clicked on embed. And there it is, and I took it, and you see how right now it says uh, embedded equals true. You just get rid of the embedded equals true, and, and you, you add, um, so there's no automatic canvas. The other, the other option lets you do that, but it doesn't give you the, the nice preview thing. So if we look down below to what the, the little carrot version is, that's this part right here. <coughs> that's this part right here. Um, so content, view, blah, blah, blah. Now, yeah, I don't know. It's a... Uh, I don't know what happens if you add like slash preview to that. Let's see if we can mess it up. It's totally unlikely. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, iframes, not so scary, but they're doable and so But the best thing is the content changes all dynamically, so that's amazing compared to E2L. That's the story. That's, don't pay attention to any of the <laughs> All right, so you've had a chance to think about this, to, to play around a little bit more. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, the navigation question. What actually was the navigation question? <laughs> oh, how do you get lost? Or how do you keep the students from getting lost? Yeah. All right. So this is, this is another thing that's really kind of important. If you get rid of all of these extra things so that the students don't see them. So if you use the pages version, you don't have to have the students go into any of the files. You can take files out. Just go to settings, and then under navigation. All the stuff in this top box here are things that students can see. So if you're not using files and you're not using modules, if you're just going to have them follow the pages, get rid of all of these things. Put them all down here. If you're not using collaborations, get rid of it. If you're not using the, the syllabus tool, get rid of it. Have them follow on that page where they can have, the, you can put the learning outcomes and then have links directly to the embedded videos and the files and things like that. Make it simpler for the students to follow. And I think part of that question was one of the issues, like if you're coming from D2L, you're used to being able to click, and then you see a little basically breadcrumb up, and then uh, you know off to the side you see the table of contents. You currently don't really have that in Canvas, and right. that is an issue because then when you click into a file, even if you click into it through pages or whatever, there isn't an easy way other than hitting the back button get back. Right. Now this is something that uh, we would encourage you to get active on the Canvas community site because there has been some um, idea requests to have breadcrumbs put into the Canvas interface. Yeah. And so if it's something that's important to you, get on there and vote for it so that Canvas will add it. But the other way to do that is to just give them that page, as you, were, as you had demonstrated, with all of that stuff right there and keep them in that spot so they don't go off and get lost. Yeah. Is there currently voting right now on that? Um, I haven't checked it in a while, but I do know that it's something we've made it 
very clear to Canvas that, that something was interested in. I remember that there was an idea that was open for voting where it's at. It may even be that Canvas has already said, yeah, we're going to start working on this. Sure. But again, but don't assume that. Can you yeah. vote anyway. if John, if somebody gets you the link, or I guess can we put a, a link into this course here so to, people can find it easily to go vote for it? To the Canvas community or to the specific? Well, to the, I guess to this course, because I don't know if everybody is in the UW Canvas community. Well, you should all be in the UW There's even a UW Madison group, so it's a nice safe space. And, and with all this, I also want to share that I appreciate the, the three-prong approach of different user types, because all of like custodial supervisors and students and 80-year-old in like a wide range of users that using the page plus the file structure mirrored in the module structure gives different ways to to come at navigation. And that's a, like that's just a form of honor. universal design for yeah. learning. So yes, the more like options. Just to call that out, that it's it's nice. <laughs> as long as it's not confusing. As long as right. each of those three different ways looks good. And it's not just yeah. like, here's all the options in the world. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other thoughts or questions about this? I did have one student on the discussion board have difficulty getting photo or pictures to appear yes. in the discussion post. And some of them were able to do it and some of them weren't. Oh. And that was tricky. There is um, a and some and so I ended up having to send students to each other and some of them never over. <coughs> There's a there's an option here under settings under more options which is hidden at the bottom of this. Here we're options. Yeah. So at the bottom of this, there's this little thing that you might not realize has all kinds of extra stuff in it. One of them is let students attach files to discussions, and that's one that is not set up by default, but maybe should be. All right, well, we hope that today has been useful.